Hey, hi guys, um, my name is Charlie, uh, for those of you who haven't met me, um, I do quite a bit of running um, in, the, in the ultra distance uh, sort of events, um, that's anything over, you know, anything over marathon distance. Um, so the longest I've done is 150 miles, before anyone asks, and that took me absolutely ages, um, that was last year. Um, so I've got, uh, got a few similar ones coming up, um, but generally I like to run more in the mountains and, uh, than, up, than on the roads. Um, so tonight I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about a training plan, um, why you should have one. I uh, hope to cover things you might include in one as well, and hopefully be able to take some really good stuff away. Um, maybe give your own training a bit of a revamp, and uh, make sure it's uh, you know make sure it's going to help you get towards your goals. Um, so first of all, um, why we would have a training plan? Uh, basically, it's to give you a bit of a structure and um, to allow you to kind of see where you need to be at certain points in your training. Uh, coming up to your goal race, so um, the main benefits are it'll keep you keep you motivated, keep you focused, um, and um, you know also it just keeps you right on track. You know, so you know what you need to do when, and uh, takes away the confusion and uh, all the effort of deciding what training to do, and, you know what session you need to do. Um, has anyone got any uh, any running goals coming up? Any uh, any races perhaps? I've got Chester two weeks. Okay. So that's obviously <coughs> quite a quite a short term one. Um, so we won't be doing too much in terms of a training plan. Yeah, you alright, Jim? Yeah. To uh, have a seat. Um, so um, yeah, if you've got a goal, say maybe, maybe three months time, that gives you enough time to actually you know make some improvements to training. Um, so for example, if you had a race near Christmas, um, you know then you'd be able to look from the goal first and then work your way back. So um, for example. You're going to do a half marathon at Christmas. Um, you already know the distance, so you can train specifically for that distance. Um, you need to kind of work out your, your goals in terms of the speed you want to do it, or if you just want to literally finish it. Um, and then you can uh, obviously plan, say in a month's time, you need to be at this distance at this speed. In two months' time, you need to be at this distance at this speed. And then eventually you'll hit your goal. Um, Charlie, when you're training, do you set specific goals? Like, do you always have a time and a or a time goal or anything like that? Yeah, so for the sort of races I tend to do, um, you wouldn't really worry about minutes per mile and things like that, because they're going to be so varied. Um, you know, one minute you could literally be on your hands and feet trying to scramble up a, a face of um, a hill. Um, that could last, you know, over half an hour, potentially. And um, that's going to really slow your mile times down. But then you come downhill and it's obviously going to speed back up. So rather than worry about that, I kind of... Uh, I would try and average it out, so say about 50k I want to be there in say 5 hours for example, or depending on the route maybe it might be 10 hours, you know, it really depends. Um, so you're going to um, be less concerned about minutes per mile, um, and more concerned about you know getting to it, um, perhaps a certain feeling. So looking more at the, um, the sort of road running, um, then obviously you can focus on certain times, certain paces. Um, what kind of level are we at? Is anyone uh, like um, just beginning, or any any new ones, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, fairly new. Okay. Um, everyone else, I know some of you've done uh, some quite long events yourselves. Um, anyone done sort of marathon distance? Yep, yeah, yeah, sort of half marathon distance as well. Um, so yeah, when you when you're initially looking to move up in distance, then. Um, you can kind of build up the volume, which is working more towards endurance. When you can already do the distance, then it's a case of either trying to improve your speed over that distance, or sort of, sort of make it feel easier. Um, you know, when you go at the same pace. So um, yeah, that's the the main point there is we need a goal. Otherwise, we don't really know how to design the training plan. Um, we'd literally be guessing at um, at what to do. Um, does anyone follow a training plan at all? Currently. Yeah, loosely. Yeah, yeah. 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 good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the uh, the optimal way would be to pick your goal race, and um, then try and find some maybe intermediate races that will fit within it. So, for example, you've got your marathon coming up in two weeks. Um, if you found a half marathon, maybe like English half, um, a few weeks ago, that might have been a good sort of final test piece to see where you're at and uh, kind of assess the performance. Um, so yeah, if it's if it's not goal orientated for you, then it's it's not really going to be that uh, that effective. 
you know, it might, might just be a coincidence that it's the ideal plan for you. Um, but if it's purely one that's just, I'll pick that one out for magazine because it was in this week's Runners World or Runners Magazine, um, then it could be designed for someone in a totally different start point, um, totally different position. Um, so to get the most out of it, just want to be goal orientated and that wants to be the, uh, the main thing. Um, so another thing you might consider if you've got a goal, go back to the half marathon in three months time, um, you might want to cycle through different phases of training. So you might have a, a phase where you're building up your endurance, so perhaps learning to run a bit further, um, which would develop your aerobic energy system. So that's basically going to improve your stamina and actually allow you to run continuously at, uh, at the speed you want. Um, following from that, you might have a strength phase, which might look at more hill running and perhaps more high speed, so sort of sprints. Um, that's going to be the best way to develop strength um, directly for running. So you think about if you're in the gym lifting weights, to get better at that, to get stronger, you could start to increase the weight. Um, with running, you don't really tend to put weights on to run with, but um, you increase the resistance in other ways. So if you're running uphill, that's going to effectively increase the resistance. The legs are going to have to work much harder to get you uphill. Um, you could use things like sprints in towards the wind. So again, you've got that resistance, you have to work harder to get to the same, uh, the same speed. Um, and then finally, yeah, you might do a purely speed-based um, phase. So I tend to do more speed work towards the end of a, a build-up to a race. So if I've got a race coming up in a month's time, I might switch my mileage to a little bit lower and more high speed, more um, more high intensity. So there's a, a drop in volume, but more speed in there. Um, just to kind of get me running faster and uh, make me feel a bit more sharp. And um, that way, when you get to your race, the, the pace is going to feel easier because it's not as high as you've been uh, running recently. Um, so next what we're going to look at is how you design your training plan. So we've obviously mentioned that we need to be goal orientated, we need to know the goal first and then work our way back from there. Um, so yeah, you might have your intermediate targets which would be either a goal race or a certain training session you want to do. Um, and you know, it obviously needs to include some actual running to get better at running, that would be that would be incredibly ideal. Um, generally, I'd recommend running sort of three times a week or more to begin with. Um, more advanced guys might run, you know, five or six, maybe even seven days a week, um, but not necessarily running hard every single session. So if you set off and try and run every session faster than the last one, um, it gets to the point where it just becomes really hard work, gets a little bit burnt out. Um, same with people who are building up the mileage. Um, some tend to start off thinking, you know, I need to get a longer run every single time. Uh, not necessarily the case. If I did that, then I'd be out for a week by now. non I'm sorry, it'd be you know, incredibly time consuming and um, wouldn't really fit with a, a lifestyle at all. Um, so yeah, with, um, with more advanced, you might want to be alternating say a hard day followed by an easy day. Um, a hard day would include something like a strength session, so maybe hill, hill training or some very fast intervals. Um, or maybe a very long run. Um, an easy day would equate to something like just a steady run, comfortable pace, um, nothing too long, and something that your body's not going to take much time to recover from. Um, so that would be you know your actual your actual running training. That would be the start. So um, yeah, you'd want to kind of consider where you're at right now, and then consider what the goal race is. So. Perhaps some of you guys have built up from marathons to go into 50 miles and uh, longer ultras. Um, you've already got some endurance, but it's a case of building a bit more so you can obviously last twice as far. Um, and um, basically with, with endurance training, what we're, what we're aiming to do is develop the aerobic system, which I mentioned earlier. And that's basically the energy system in our body for continuous exercise. So. Um, you know, like running non-stop, for example. Um, that also becomes very important the further you go. But um, initially, you know, even, even running five miles is a long way when you get started. That's, that's incredible. It's just a matter of building it, up from, uh, building it on from there. Um, so, yeah, I'd have, in a typical week, um, one, one run would be sort of my longer run. Um, sometimes when you're sort of training for the perhaps even further distances, um, you you might want to look at um, doing back-to-back -back long runs. So running two days in a row with quite good mileage, but not quite you know, a huge, huge, great distance. 
So for example, if you're training for a 50 mile race, um, I know some of you might be, um, doing say a 20 mile one day and a 20 mile the next is going to have less stress on the body than doing one 40 mile run, for example. So it allows you to recover quicker and get back to your training quicker, um, but you'll still get a, a very good, uh, good, good workout from it. And um, you know, your body's not really going to know the difference uh, all too much. Um, you, know, you certainly feel it in your legs at the next time. Um, it equally can work with people who are doing things like half marathons or 10Ks for the first time. Um, you know, maybe running three or four miles one day and then the same the next. And that's going to effectively feel like you've run a, a whole lot further. Um, so that would be to develop the endurance. Um, another consideration we would have uh, is speed, because uh, none of us want to be at the back. Um, although not, we're not, not all racing snakes or worried about super fast times, um, you know, it's nice when you can run a bit faster if you need to. Um, so initially to start off with uh, some speed training. Um, anyone done any speed training at all, any fall? Yeah, most of us, yeah, good. Um, so yeah, in terms of speed training, for some people that's a case of running around a track, um, <coughs> you know, doing different paces there, sort of intervals. Um, for others that might just be, um, you know, doing a 30 second burst of speed during a, during a shorter run. Um, so they're loosely what the um, loosely what the kind of things will be including. Um, so you've got your long run we've mentioned. Um, some people have easy runs, which um, basically is just going out for literally an easy run. So it's just a way of getting more mileage in, um, building up your running efficiency, which is just your body's adaptions to running. So it makes it more efficient at uh, running. So think of it if it was a car, it'd be like a higher miles per gallon. So you'll use less energy to get to the same kind of distance as you would when you were untrained. Um, something that um, you might have heard of before is strides. Um, basically what they are, some people do them in terms of meters. Uh, I tend to do them in time, so basically just doing a 30 second burst of speed at a, like a controlled fast pace um, during, a, during an easy run. So rather than just getting kind of stuck in a motion of running slowly, it just kind of loosens the legs up, helps to lengthen the stride, so helps with flexibility through the legs and hips, um, and just gets you used to, you know, pushing the pace a little bit, but only in 30 second bursts, so we're not really getting tired out, not getting, um, not getting too tired. For um, sort of new, new runners, that might be, um, that might be quite an effective way of building the speed to start with, and it might be strenuous enough. So not every session has to completely wipe you out and leave you, you know, crawling off the, the track or crawl into your car at the end. Um, although it's sometimes funny, um, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so that would be uh, that would be strides and um, developing from there. Once once we get a bit more advanced, so perhaps someone who's been running continuously for about six months, or if you're one of those natural people who are born born runners, um, those elusive people. Um, you might start to look at some other types of running. Um, anyone here want to be a bit faster when they're running? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so this bit's probably going to be a bit more relevant for you. Um, so what we've got, we've got different kinds of runs like tempo runs um, or interval runs. So um, I'll cover tempo running first. Um, has anyone heard of it before? Yeah? yeah. Cool. Brilliant. Um, so tempo running, it gets um, the term gets used a lot. Um, gets thrown around a little bit, but um, technically um, what we want to be doing is running about 85 to 90% of our maximum speed. So it's not like a full on sprint and you know it's not sort of so comfortable you could just you know, jog along chatting. Um, it does take a bit of effort and um, if you imagine uh, an effort level in your head, um, say 10 being a full on sprint and excuse me, um, 10 being a full on sprint and um, one being like lying in bed asleep, you're going to be looking like 8 out of 10 for a tempo run. So, you know, you're not flying around recklessly. Um, it's hard enough so you could maybe get a, few, a couple of words um, of speech, but you wouldn't be able to string a full sentence together. So, roughly, it's going to be, uh, for most people, 30 to 40 seconds lower than your 10k pace. So, if you've run a few 10ks, it'll be about 30 seconds slower than that. Um, and that's scientifically that's the optimal range that we want to be in for developing our body's sort of energy systems to help us run faster. 
So people who are doing marathons, um, you know, tempo running is very effective for increasing like speed endurance, if that makes sense. So it gets you faster at longer distances. Um, it's my sort of my favourite kind of uh, of interval. Um, it tends to be to start with. Um, you might start in doing maybe three minute blocks. So you might do a three minute hard block of uh, running, followed by maybe 90 seconds where you just gain your breath back, just jogging, um, and then you know going into another three minute block. Um, you can also do that on a hill, and that will get the same effect. Um, but uh, if it's all about speed, then I'd say do it on the on the flat. Um, so yeah, you could start with that, and then eventually you can progress it up to maybe 20 minutes at that pace. So almost like doing 10k, but an easy pace. Uh, sorry, 5k, but an easy pace. Um, or you might progress it up to even 40 minutes. Anything over that, it's going to take you long to recover, and you're not going to get the same benefits from it. So there's always, um, you know, like a, an upper limit. So you know, if you train quite hard, you'll progress, progress, progress. But then if you go over sort of too much, you'll end up coming back down again. Um, so if you know, it's not always the more you run or the faster you run, the better. Um, you know, if I was to run, I don't know, a ridiculous weekly mileage every week, I'd eventually sort of, you know, be improving for a bit, and then I just start to get tired, and you know, you'd end up being risk risking more injuries and things like that. Um, but equally as well, um, if you're running like too too easy runs, just too easy all the time, you're not going to get that that big ramp up of uh, improvement. So it's about finding the balance for yourself as well. Um, one thing just to sneak in there as well with a training plan, um, it's not sort of set in stone that you have to do it or give up. Um, you know, if you're having a particularly rough day where you feel like oh, everything's a bit tight, feels like it's going to snap or legs feel like they're going to drop off, um, that probably all uh, relates to that feeling. It's not always good to go, you know, racing into a hard interval session. Um, it's always better to stay injury free and uh, be able to keep running than it is to, you know, smash yourself through all the training sessions and uh, turn up on race day totally knackered. Um, I know from, from the past I thought, oh yeah, I'll squeeze some extra training in. I ended up a bit tired for the race and thinking, oh well, it didn't really do me any good. Um, but as long as you learn from something, then it's a good, good experience to have. Um, so going back to the, uh, the tempo runs, um, main pace is going to be 30 to 40 seconds, less than your 10k pace. And you're going to build up to sort of 20 to 40 minutes worth. Of, uh, of running there, so particularly people are looking to build the distances up. Um, if you're running, you know, shorter distances, maybe 5k, um, building up to 20 minutes would be, you know, would be ample. So you need to consider um, like how much volume you're doing in a total week as well. So your, your tempo run doesn't really want to be, you know, half of your weekly mileage. It wants to be, you know, between 10% and uh, maybe 15% of your weekly mileage as a, as a rough guide. So um, you know, say you're doing 30 miles a week, building up to like three miles in total of tempo running would be uh, would be cool. Um, if you're doing 100 miles a week, then you know you might build up to even 10 miles um, or something along those lines. Um, obviously, if you're doing a longer race, then it will make sense to have longer tempo sessions. So if you're training for a marathon, you, know, you might get maybe 10 miles worth of tempo running in a week. If you're only training for a 5k, there's no need for you know such a long amount of, uh, of training. Um, so it's about, about finding the balance again between what you need to do and you know what's relevant for you. So a 5k runner um, who's just looking to get round and you know survive in half an hour, um, <coughs> there's no need to be doing you know 20 uh, uh, 20 miles a week of tempo running and loads of intervals and a massive long run. It just needs to be enough for you. So that's where that's where we get specific to our goals. Um, and yeah, last thing, um, if you're a bit more sciencey, um, the tempo running is basically increasing what's called your lactate threshold. So when you exercise, I don't know if any of you have ever felt that burning sensation you get in your muscles. Um, that's basically down to your muscle breaking down, um, breaking down products for energy. Um, that's called metabolism when your body makes energy from something. Um, and the the main things that come out of that, the main byproducts, are hydrogen ions and uh, what's the other one? Lactate uh, ions. So they're what they're what cause your muscle to start burning, and eventually it stops you from running. So if you run as fast as you could for as long as you could, eventually your legs would just sort of seize up, and you'd have to slow down or walk. 
Um, so yeah, think of that as speed endurance, really important one to include. Um, beyond that, um, you might have heard of interval training, it's quite popular. Um, there's different styles of interval training. Uh, some people do time-based intervals, so literally with a stopwatch do say 30 seconds or 60 seconds or you know so many minutes. Um, basically the intervals are more high intensity than, um, than your tempo run usually. So getting closer to a race I might be training at um, you know 100 or 120 percent of my race speed, so actually faster than my race, um, race speed. Uh, the reason being just because you want to get your body to adapt to these high speeds. Um, in terms of adaptions, it's getting the body, body stronger, um, perhaps developing stride length or leg turnover speed. Um, and they're, they're generally quite short and quite intense sessions. So similar to the tempo running, um, these want to be less than 10% of our, our total week. So, you know, again, if you're running 30 miles a week, um, you don't want to be doing much more than sort of three miles of of high intensity intervals. Um, if you're just, just running interval training, you you know you put yourself more at risk for injuries. Um, you might get very fast for you know a short term, um, but you need to obviously give your body time to rest and adapt as well. So a, a training plan shouldn't just be the same thing week in week out forever. It it would obviously vary as well, um, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, so yeah, the, the high intensity intervals, they might be like ninety percent or above. Of your, your maximum effort, so really hard, really going for it there. Um, again, like the tempo running, um, the amount and the volume will depend on the race you want to train for. So again, someone who's training for a marathon, um, you know, you might want to do more intervals in total um, compared to someone who's training for a 5k. And um, you know, a 5k runner doesn't need to be able to do 10 miles worth of intervals. Um, it's just just excessive. I'm not saying it. Might, it might help, but um, it wouldn't be as specific as possible. And um, you know, there's there's more efficient ways of doing things. Um, my favourite uh, my favourite kind of training is hill training. Um, surprise, surprise! Uh, I like my hills. Um, and yeah, hill training can be done in many different ways. Um, largely, it depends on what um, sort of stage of training you're in. If you wanted to do, a, say, a short, really steep hill, um, that maybe would take up to 30 seconds to, to get up to the top and really sprinting. Um, that's going to be great for developing the strength um, because you're at a high intensity and uh, obviously when you're going up an incline it requires much more strength to push you up. You're not just going forwards, you've got to go up as well against gravity effectively. Um, so that's um, that would be like hill sprints uh, more or less. Um, if you've got a really long hill, so maybe you've got a hill that's about a kilometre, kilometre long um, or a hill that might take you about five minutes to get up and again that's going to be more like a lactate threshold um, run so more like a tempo run but using a hill um, so you get to a certain intensity a certain angle and your body basically will be able to maintain a certain speed um, but when you go over that that certain speed when you go over that optimal speed that's when the legs will start to really burn up or if the hill gets steeper and you keep the speed the same then again the legs will really start to burn up so by increasing the lactate threshold that will improve the tolerance you have and therefore allow you to either run at a faster pace for a longer distance or run up a steeper hill at, a, at the same speed or a faster speed. Um, so yeah, hill training as well, what people think of the uphill but they don't always consider the downhill. Um, many of you have done say more hilly races, uh, particularly like late 50. Um, um, yeah, many of you have done um, training or hilly runs like the late 50, um, you probably notice the quads get a bit tender on the downhills, um, particularly towards the end there going down into Coniston. Um, it's actually, you know, puts more stress on the body than going up. Um, there's more impact because you're actually, you know, bounding downhill rather than kind of sneaking up. Um, I'm not saying it's any easier or harder, but um, the stress on the body is greater, yeah, on the downhills. Um, so some, some downhill running might be you know, finding a finding a decent hill that's um, not too steep that you kind of back on the brakes, but um, you know you can get a decent pace down it um, and do some controlled fast running down hills. Um, partly just to get used to the technique, but again also just to build up the legs tolerance to uh, to all that impact of coming down. Um, people who are starting out, so 
maybe less experienced runners. Um, <coughs> field training could literally be just having a go at running up some, some inclines. Um, so, you know, maybe just 60 seconds of actual uphill running for a start. It's going to be quite tough um, for anyone who's not run on hills before. It's going to help them, you know, really develop their aerobic system too. So get a lot stronger a lot quicker. Um, that's, um, that's basically all the running components of a training plan. Um, they're all the different types of runs. So you've got your long run, you've got your easy runs, um, strides, which you include. Uh, you've got tempo runs and your intervals. That's five, I think. And your hill training. So, you know, roughly six to play with. Um, there are variations, um, you know, certain styles of interval training as well, which people find popular. Um, but they're the, uh, you know, the main ones. So just by manipulating those in different ways would uh, would get you to most of your you know most of your training goals. Um, again, just want to be just want to be tweaked so that um, they're suitable for the race you've got planned, and uh, also relevant paces need to be planned just so you run at the right speed for you. So um, when you're planning um, when you're doing training plans, uh, you want to work on speeds that you can do rather than the speed you're working up to. Um, so it will be a challenge in pace. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be as fast as you possibly can. Um, that's um, one of the one of the key things with interval training um, and faster running. It doesn't have to be literally as fast as you can to get benefit from it. It's not always, you know, the faster the better. Um, so beyond that, um, another consideration would be cross training. Um, does anyone do any cross training at all for the running? A little bit. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Biking and stuff. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Yeah. So cross training could be anything that's non-running. Um, but still going to develop aerobic system, um, still going to make you you know fitter in uh, in general. Um, so yeah, a lot of people like cycling, um, swimming perhaps. Um, there's other things that you could do, you know, even even things like hiking, although very similar, um, it is slightly less impact. Um, so basically, cross training is just a way of kind of bulking up your training so you can get more um, you know more training done, but without stressing the same muscles over and over again. So, for example, if your legs are really, really tired, you think, "Oh, I'm just gonna, my legs are gonna snap when I go out today. I'm not gonna do that interval session. I'll go out on the bike instead, and you know, just get the legs moving, get the muscles working, but not sort of absolutely smash them um, again." So, um, cross training, yeah, some people um, really like it. Um, I think you should work on getting the running training sorted first. Um, so, you know, it's not worth thinking, "Oh, I'll miss that run and get some extra cross training in." You know, you'd rather get the running in first as a priority. Um, if, if your goal's, you know, primarily running. Um, one more point as well, um, for beginners, cross training is quite useful. Um, just while they're building up the tolerance to, you know, running more. Um, it just allows them to develop their energy systems more as well. Uh, get a bit stronger, but takes some of the stress off the, uh, off the joints. So if anyone's got sort of aching knees or anything when they first start, um, yeah, they uh, you know they might be able to bulk it up with a bit of cycling, for example, just to help strengthen the legs up and uh, you know develop their endurance. Yeah, what about um, shin splints as well? That's quite um, a killer for me. Yeah, shin splints. Um, so if you're suffering from them and it's preventing you running, then something like cycling is going to be you know, less stressful. Um, it shouldn't have the same impact. So um, you know it's a matter of uh, just doing what you can. So rather than saying right, I've got you know, I've got pains in my shins, I can't do any running at all, I'll go to the pub instead. Um, not accusing you, but just, you know, in general, if that was um, someone's thought. looking at me when you say this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, if it was a case of, like, right, it's either that or nothing, um, you could get out, you know, do some swimming, do some cycling, so it's going to help, you know, develop energy systems, going to make you more efficient at <coughs> using fuel, um, and, you know, it gets you, it gets you moving, gets you doing some exercise without the same stress. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just something that needs uh, needs looking at, obviously, by someone who's uh, who's able to do so. Uh, it can be down to sort of shoes not quite fitting, or it can be down to running style, running style, or um, things like your gait. So how your foot moves when it when it lands and hits the floor. Um, but yeah, cross training will be ideal for times when the you know when they're flaring up, and uh, when you feel like you can't do uh, do much running. Um, so that's that's basically cross training. Anyone got any questions on cross training? We're all pretty happy with that. Would that include strength work, or is that a separate? Um, so that's that's um, separate. Yeah. Okay. So, although um, we'll move on to that now. So, 
um, yeah, resistance training or strength training. Um, you might also call it core training, depending on um, you know how you uh, how you define it. Um, that's basically the stuff you do that's going to help you running. But it's again, it's not running based, um, but it's not really aerobic, so it doesn't tend to be um, swimming or cycling. Um, so for myself, um, that's what I do with with many of my clients um, is the resistance training part. So to actually get them strong enough. Um, for you know the races they're entering, um, basically makes the body strong and uh, supportive. So when you go to run, you don't really have to worry about you know things like your, your body you know collapsing and getting tired. You can keep a good form throughout, and uh, obviously stay stay efficient when you're running. Um, my my running's really accelerated since I started including it. At first, I was a bit reluctant. I thought you know it's going to tire me out for for running. Uh, but providing you get the intensity right, it shouldn't really leave us tired. It should. Um, you know, should help us feel better, and uh, you know, if, if you're doing loads and loads of gym training, perhaps or resistance training, and you feel like you know you're walking like a penguin, can't can't run, then obviously that's that's overdoing it a little bit for um, for the running. Um, I know we've probably all overdone that a little bit, gone to a bit of a uh, hardcore circuit class and uh, ended up hobbling out. But, um, that's all uh, that's all good fun, isn't it? But um, yeah, it's not going to help our running as much if we're having to take a week off to recover. Uh, after every time we go to the gym, it's obviously going to hinder us a little bit. Um, so it's about doing just enough, but um, also about making sure it's very specific to our running. Um, so there's a lot of exercises um, people do in the gym, which don't really have any correlation to running. So um, my sort of background is in functional training, which basically means you want to create an exercise that mimics the um, the activity you're going to do. So for example, a runner. You can have lots of exercises that look very similar to running, and the body's experiencing similar forces to running. So um, if you think, right, I'm going to run on my legs, so I'll just work my legs, and I'll sit on a machine in the gym, and you know push a plate away with my legs. Uh, it's very very dissimilar to running because you know you sat down for a start. There's no balance involved. There's no stability involved. Um, if both the legs are working, you know symmetrically, then again it's even less like running. Um, normally, when you're running, one leg's doing one thing while the other's doing the other, the complete opposite. Um, so it's about making it, you know, as, as specific as possible. Um, things like lunges are going to be, you know, a bit more specific than, say, a squat, for example. Um, the way I like to uh, imagine it is, if you had a scale, so over this side you've got functional and therefore useful. Over this side you've got not functional, so not as much use. Um, something up here would be say so your, your furthest up here on the scale the better really. So right at this end you can have your race, that's your most functional thing you can do. Because that's what you're training for, that's the goal. So moving back you might have a practice race over here. Moving back you might have your gym work somewhere in the middle. Um, so yeah coming back into the, the gym training again. Um, you might have something like a lunge. So literally if you're doing a lunge like so. Um, it's going to be a little bit better than a squat because a squat, both feet are together. Yeah, so a lunge is going to be slightly better than a, a squat, for example, but you could still make it more more similar to running, more efficient. Um, so you consider the speed your legs are moving at when you're running, um, the impact, things like that. So when you're running, you tend to land on the one leg. So that would be a bit more like a hop, perhaps. Something like that is going to obviously be more similar to running than just doing a straightforward squat. Um, so yeah, basically you want to make sure that to make the most out of your time um, and to make the most out of your training, make sure it's all helping you towards your goal. You want to make the resistance training as specific as possible. Um, but don't really want to overdo it because that will leave us a bit stiff and we'll suffer then in our running. Um, by all means, if you, you know, if your other goals are resistance based, so if you wanted to get better at certain uh, weightlifting activities or um, things like that, then you know you might find it useful to do that. But we're focusing purely on a running, a running goal. Um, so that would be that would be covering pretty much everything, um, apart from people do sort of core training. Um, so basically, core is all the muscles between your shoulders and your hips, all these muscles in here. Um, so typically, people think of doing sit-ups or crunches for core training. Um, the problem with that is first that you're lying on your back. I uh, don't know about most of you, but I'm not usually on my back during running races, so it doesn't look very specific to the running. Um, it's basically teaching us to kind of curl our body up, 
Um, if we were to do that when we're running, we're going to run like this. It's going to be very inefficient. Um, I'm going to talk about posture next, which will uh, which will help explain it. So, with our with our posture, that's basically the way we carry ourselves. Um, everyone just sat up. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, people who sat at desks during the day, for example, um, general posture will be you know, sort of like this, and a bit like a, a bit like an ape almost. Um, so when we're uh, when we're sat like that, um, there's a number of things happening. The muscles are kind of getting used to that position that they're in. So um, basically, that effectively shortens some muscles, such as on the front of the hips, um, such as the back of the legs, uh, the lower legs, um, perhaps muscles in the chest and the stomach. So we want to consider that as well when we're doing our exercises in the gym. I uh, want to make sure that they're kind of bringing us into this straight position. So um, if I'm if I'm going running and I'm in this position here, I'm, I'm not going to be a very effective runner. Um, basically, my, my lungs are being squashed by my, my tight chest. Yeah, there's a lot of weight pushing onto my lungs. So as fit as you are, you're, you're reducing the efficiency because you, you can't breathe as much as you could. So basically, squashed lungs there would mean uh, massive reduced um, massive reduced breathing. Um, breathing is pretty useful for most runners. Um, helps to take the oxygen into the body, which we uh, we need to move. Uh, obviously, to stay alive as well. So if we're if we're in this position, that's going to reduce the efficiency. And um, also, going to start to put strain on muscles here. So anyone who's had back pain before when they're running, um, often it's down to postural things rather than there actually being a problem with the back. Um, so you know, if you've got a, a back condition, then uh, it's different. But if you purely just get achy muscles, it can wear that hurt me. Um, it can often be jet down to the posture. Um, next thing that might be effective for you know spending most of the day in this position is the muscles at the front here can sort of tighten up and stiffen up. And um, what that basically does is pulls us <coughs> into a into a tilted position here and creates an excessive curve on the back there. So if I'm like this, a bit like Donald Duck, so a bit of an arch in the back there. Basically, what that means is that when I lift my leg to push off as I'm running. It's going to be restricting it. It's not going to be able to come as high up. Um, did anyone watch the Great North Run on the weekend? Might have seen the uh, front runners there on the last uh, last mile. You notice that uh, the heels are right up at the back. There, they're getting a lot of activity behind the body. Um, if you've got tight muscles on the front, so if I just go into that position there, I can't get my heel up anywhere near. So effectively, I can't push off and use all the muscles down the back of the leg there to to power me along. Um, so that's that's something that gym training can help, and uh, that's why I also would include that in uh, in a training plan. Um, and there would be, you know, most of the uh, most of the things we'd include um, to give us a good <coughs> all-round balanced training plan. Um, flexibility is actually something as well. Um, again, with flexibility, we want to try and make sure the muscles are, are obviously flexible enough for running, but. Uh, also, that we're stretching the right ones. Um, tend to go to a race, and uh, particularly the road races, not to pick on anyone. Um, tend to see loads of people going for big hamstring stretches and things, and you know, bouncing through all sorts of stretching routines. <coughs> um, often they're not stretching the right muscles. Um, it's just purely because they've seen someone else do it. Mm. It looks fast. I'll, I'll do his stretches. Um, so you know, it does happen. Um, probably all guilty of it at some point. Um, we just want to uh, make sure that the stretches are specific to us and our body shape, because obviously everyone's body is different. Um, so same as we'd, you know, change the uh, length of intervals, change the speed of intervals for ourselves. We want to change the stretches and uh, all the exercises for us as well. Um, so that's basically all the things I would include in a training plan. Um, does anybody have any questions at all? Anyone like to ask any questions? Yeah, I've got one, Charlotte. Sorry. Yeah, in in terms, of, in terms of distance. So, like when you, so like myself, I've got a goal. I know what my goal is, which is a half marathon, and I know when it is, yeah. and I know what distance I can run at the moment. So yeah. for me, it's all about building up my distance again. Brilliant. Is there, a, is there an optimal like percentage that I should be looking at building up there for? I can sort of work backwards and work at, work out where I need to be. Yeah. Well, on your um, on your long run, um, typically you want to build that up. The recommended sort of maximum is about 10% per week. Um, per week, yeah. And then, you know, listening to the body though. So if the body doesn't feel up to it, then just take an easier week. Yeah. Um, but I'd sort of fit in an easier week. 
you know, maybe every four weeks. Um, sometimes I would have an easy week alternated by a hard week, depending on what I'm doing. Um, so you kind of need to look at, you know, other things as well. But, um, yeah, I'd say rough, roughly, you know, 10% is a good, good build-up. It's obviously, you know, obviously lenient. Because um, when you first start, you're coming from nowhere. So 10% of nothing is, is nothing. You would never be able to build up. Um, and again, if you're doing you know really long races, I uh, know some of you guys did a little in 50. Um, you know, 10% of that would be, you know, right, we jumped to 55 miles now, and then we jumped to 60, and then we jumped, you know, 66. It's um, when you get to certain points, it, it won't really matter. So um, specifically for yourself, looking at you know, some people go on a mile a week, some people go on about 10%, um, but some people work in kilometres and they do a kilometre a week. So it's kind of about you know feeling feeling what your body is up for and um, if in doubt just you know reducing intensity or um, you know if you're midway on a run and something just doesn't feel right it's always worth just you know stopping and uh, you know doing the, the walk of shame back at home, yeah. or uh, get a train or a taxi or something yeah um, you know it's, it's not worth like battling through just to, to end up with an injury um, so it, it brings you further back when you've uh, you know when you've recovered um, yeah, there's a couple of hands just at the front there. Yeah, I had a specific question. So you mentioned tempo running and, and starting off at around three minutes for yeah. that section. So how would you kind of progress that from three minutes up to the 40 minutes? Yeah, so um, for example, if you've never done them before or you've never done any fast running before um, or you've never, you know, never really raced much, um, you might start from three minutes to maybe you know, five three-minute blocks. Um, you might build that up to you know, maybe five minute blocks the next time or four minute blocks. So you're getting roughly 20 minutes in total um, and reducing the amount of blocks that's in. Right. So say you've got, you know, five, three minutes to start with, you know, might then the next week do five lots of four minutes. So, you, you know, getting that little bit more, um, more intensity and uh, more over overall load, basically. Right. Um, then from there, you might start to do, you know, two 10 minute blocks and then you could build into two 20 minute blocks, for example. Um, it depends on the total distance you're running for. I've done, I've done as big as five, five k um, blocks, um, which were you know just up to 20 minutes, um, and done sort of three or four of those. But it, it does, it would depend on the race and um, things like that. Um, but yeah, just to, to build up, it's it's just a matter of making sure it's like a logical progression. So if you see, you know, your first one, first week you've done that five lots of three minutes suddenly doing four lots of ten minutes is going to be a huge jump so you'd pick something you know more intermediate to that um, generally when you're changing intervals and changing things like that you only want to manipulate one thing at a time so if you're starting with you know uh, changing your distance you don't want to make the distance bigger and the speed faster at the same time or you know if you make the distance bigger and the rest smaller at the same time that's going to be a big shock as well so, you know, you just try and change one thing, so maybe make them faster or maybe make them longer or more of them, um, but just one thing at a time is, uh, is best. If you're starting out with those tempo things, the three minutes, yep. how many count in between? Um, you so you might have about 90 seconds initially because it's, it's a pace that's not our maximum pace. Um, so if you've done a 10k, which I may have, um, you'd be taking about 30 to 40 seconds off that speed so if you did your 10k and bang on an hour um, at 10, 10 minute miles you might do your tempo running at 10 40 a mile and you know you might do your three minutes at that then 90 seconds and three minutes again and if that feels really easy you know you might be able to jump up a bit um, but if you're not sure or if it's feeling quite challenging um, then you can you know build up a bit slower um, and, uh, and do it that way. Yeah. If it feels really easy, um, then you might have you know progressed a lot since your first 10k or your last 10k that you did. Uh, if it's been a while since you did one, um, so you could then consider uh, working on just on the perceived perceived effort. So that 10 out of uh, 10 scale I mentioned um, would work too. Or if you've got a heart rate monitor, um, it's about 85 to 90 percent of your max for tempo running. Yeah. Roughly, uh, roughly in that range. I, I don't use a heart rate monitor myself. Um, I find they're okay when they work, but then suddenly I get a reading of 240 beats a minute when I've just got you know just got 
got going. I'm a bit bit worried. Um, it kind of distracts me. So um, more recently, I've although I have a, a GPS watch. Um, in races, I've just been ignoring it and running.